there was a throne. The Bible says he was sitting on the throne. And you may say, well, what's the big deal there? He was sitting calm. Okay, Elder Griffin said I could take a seat, all right. <laughs> he said I could take a seat in so-called my own church. Now, that's what got oh, Zion in trouble talking about this in my church. But, you know, but the picture of God, he just uh -huh. sitting. Uh -huh. yeah. And I just want you to know he's not standing up, prancing around and, and twisting his hands. He, 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 was, he was not wiping his brow. He was not trying to figure out what am I going to do, what am I going to do uh -huh. with all the craziness that's going on in the earth. Yeah. He, he was not worried. He was not stressed out. Uh -huh. He was not freaking out. He was not going off. He was just sitting there uh -huh. in control, uh -huh. sitting there, uh -huh. not caught by surprise uh -huh. by anything, uh -huh. sitting there, uh -huh. not blown away by anything. Uh -huh. You know why? Because it might have been him who was causing the stuff that was getting blown away to begin with oh my goodness gracious and I just want you to know my friends is that when we draw near to God we not only draw near to him to discover more intimacy with him but as it says there on one screen or the other we need to draw near to God to find security in the sovereignty and control of God. God wasn't confused. God wasn't anxious. And friends, guess what this has to do with this whole issue of whether it's 14 days, 21 days, or 30 days to overcome emotional strongholds. Listen now. What this has to do with overcoming the strongholds in our life is so often when our world has gotten turned upside down, yeah. we struggle with it, we become more insecure. When our world gets turned upside down, uh, we, and we lose control, oh my goodness gracious. Uh, when people in our lives, listen now, so-called abandon us, and we've been dependent on them to be the source of control and stability in our lives. And it messes us up emotionally more than God uh, would desire in our lives. No doubt uh, Judah and Isaiah felt abandoned by Isaiah. And whether they might have been mad at Isaiah for making such a dumb mistake, notwithstanding they could have made the same mistake or whether simply mad at God, that God had the nerve to take out of this world uh, someone they was depending on, it can do us in in our emotion. Yeah. It can become a stronghold in our life. And so there are times I do not want to put at the feet of God every bad thing that goes on because the Bible reminds us that the devil is the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God does allow. Yeah, allow. He does allow. Whether he orchestrated it or not, he allows our world to become turned upside down. But it's often his way of positioning us to get closer to him and let him work on the stronghold in our lives yeah. and trusting him to be in control even when we're not in control. Yeah. Uh, thirdly and lastly, and I'll try to close as quick as I can, uh, when we, if, 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 if we look up, if we look up, if we look up, when our world caves in, we discover intimacy with God. When we look up, when we look up and, and, and we discover that our insecurity is dealt with. But lastly, uh, what God is calling us to not only uh, look up to uh, draw closer with intimacy, to draw closer concerning uh, insecurity, but then there's the issue of inadequacy. There's the ins issue of inadequacy. And when I say the issue of inadequacy, friends, if we draw near to God, listen, and this is the key word. Listen, church, it's there on the screen. He will feel, and if you don't remember any word, it's that four-letter word as soon as it gets up there. Uh, he will feel 
and what satisfy the what emptiness of our heart. The word there is feel, F-I-L-L, because look at verse 1 one more time. In the year that King Uzziah died, I what saw the Lord uh, sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and then, oh, oh, here, here's our word, here's our word, and his train did what? Field. Oh, my goodness, uh, the, the, the temple, the train, the train. We're referring to uh, the train of his robe, not just his whole robe. I said just a train. What you mean train? Well, 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 well you know, ladies and men, you know, we come to wedding dresses. Come on now. Uh, you know what the train of the wedding dress is. And, uh, so I was just reading where someone mentioned that more than likely the, 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 the most watched uh, wedding in human history was more than likely when Princess Diana and Prince Charles uh, uh, were married. And some of you, if you remember that wedding dress, there was this awesome train. Now, keep in mind, ladies, the train is not the dress. I know y'all think it is, but the train is not. It's just supposed to be an attachment to it. Uh, I'm told that thing was 25 feet long. You know, she might be five feet tall or six feet tall, but the bad train. They're talking about the awesome train. Just a train. That, that, you know, uh, she's all the way up at the altar, but the train is still all the way back here. Well, well I want you to... I, I want to let you know today, I want to let you know today, the Bible says God had on a robe. And it wasn't the robe, just the train of the robe. It filled the entire temple. I want you to know it's not accidental. This word feel is here. Not only did the train that attached to his robe feel the temple, but if you'll notice the word feel continues to show up in this passage. Verse 3 says, And one cried unto the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is what? Full of, there's our word again, Oh, his train filled the temple. He reminded them the whole earth is full of his glory. But that's not the end of the feeling. Because if you look at verse 4, it says, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the Bible says in verse 4, And the what? And the whole house was what? Filled. There's our word again. was filled with smoke. I do not again think it's accidental that Isaiah, points out today that the train filled up the temple, that the whole glory, if we let the glory of God in our life, it will fill the earth and the presence of God. It, it, it shook and, and the, the, the smoke filled the temple and where I'm going with this is simply this. God wants to fill the, not F-E-E-L, but F-I-L-L. -L. He wants to fill the emptiness in our heart and emptiness in our lives. Don't tell me that Isaiah's heart and mind was not empty when he came in from that traumatic of uh, processing the death of that leader. And my friends, but I want you to know that during this time of drawing near to God, and I know my time is up, and uh, you know, we'll, we, we'll pick up again next week, but I want you to know, I want you to know, listen, listen, listen. The reason during this season, we need to seek God. And when I say seek God, spend time in his word, spend time in prayer. It's because God knows. And so often we feel how empty we are when we've lost what we've lost. And there's something that's counterintuitive or Paradoxical, and those just long multisyllabic words for that just means that uh, you know the, the 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 very thing that you may be seeking, you have to be open to the opposite approach. But the opposite approach, if it's God's approach, 
You would get what you want if you do it God's way. But if you keep on doing it your way, you'll never get what you want. And so you're better off doing it God's way to get what you want and need. And what this has to do here is he needed, uh, he needed his heart comforted. He needed uh, his emptiness in his life ministered to. But God did not start with him ministering to the emptiness in his heart. God let him reach out to him. And I just want you to know there's something something about drawing near to God first. I said draw near to God first. And when we draw near to God first, God has a way. I have no idea how he does it, but God has a way of meeting our deepest need. When we seek his face, We'll experience the blessing of his hand. But when we're just looking for the blessing of his hand, we won't experience the blessing of his face. I close with this quote as we get prepared to sing the uh, altar selection. This is what one writer says. He says this, what God in his sovereignty may yet do on a world scale, I do not know. But what he'll do for the plain man or woman, boy or girl, who seeks his face, I believe I do know and can tell others. He says, let any man or woman, boy or girl, turn to God in earnest and let him seek God in his godliness and be open to the will of God in his life. And this writer says that if we'll do that, he can guarantee that the results will exceed anything we may have hoped for in our leaner and weaker days. And it's just his way of saying, you know what, if we'll see God like never before, in the midst of our world being turned upside down like never before, we'll experience what Isaiah experienced. The intimacy will enhance our lives. The insecurity can be uh, uh, delivered from our lives. Yes. And the inadequacy, God will fill us up, amen, yes. and meet our deepest needs. Let's pray. Father God, just want to thank you. We just want to thank you for this call. Yes. That when life caves in, what then? Thank you for the call, Lord God, to yes. look up to you. Yes. Help us, Lord God, to, during this time, to believe that if we draw closer to you, the more intimacy we'll experience with you. Yes. And thank you, Lord God, thank you that in your own way, yes. you have a way that if we'll seek you first, yes. in your kingdom, yes. all these other things will be added unto us. Yes. It's in your name we pray, yes. and we ask it all. Amen. 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 God bless you. Would you stand on your feet? Would you stand?